Well, happy to be joined here on Pac-12 Network by UCLA's basketball star, Natalie Cho. There's so many different questions I want to ask you, Natalie, but I got to start by asking about your mom here and the role that she played. Explain to me how crucial she's been in your success. Oh, she's been a huge part, um, both on and off the court um, in my life. Um, She's been my main supporter and mentor throughout everything that I've experienced. And um, I've learned almost everything I know about basketball from her. Um, And she introduced me to the game and everything that I need to know. So she's had a huge part um, in my success. So, yeah. (laughs) Well, it's interesting because from a genetic standpoint, you have the frame and the body type and obviously the the skill and the gift to play basketball, but there's so many other things around the game that translate to success. So you have some of the intangibles, but do you think you'd be where you are today without her? Absolutely not. Um, She's taught me so many lessons off and on the court. Um, She really instilled like hard work and determination and being um, obedient and um, staying the course in everything that I do. Um, So without that, I would not, be where I am today at all. Natalie, from a sports standpoint, as I'm watching the feature, your mom has said, and she's made reference to it, that people didn't trust her because she was a Chinese coach. How, how hard is that for you, not only as a player, but as her daughter, to hear something like that? Yeah, it was really, it's really hard. And um, I saw that a lot growing up and attending her classes every day. Um, and it's something that me as like a player, I face everything as, I mean, I face every day as well. Um, I feel the need to prove myself to my teammates, to my coaches and, um, to every, like to onlook onlookers to show that I can play basketball and I'm not that sort of token player, um, you would say, and that people would say, and, um, I just wanted to show people that I deserve the space and the position that, um, I had. And it was just something that I worked on every day. How much does that push you? Because it, it sounds like you're playing with a chip on your shoulder. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's just something Michael Jordan said in his documentary that you have to play like, um, you have to play every game like someone new and someone who's never seen you is watching and you have to prove to them how good you are. So I kind of have that mentality when I'm playing. Yeah. You're, you're playing hoops as a kid. I'm watching that in the feature. And you made reference to a lot of the negative comments that you were hearing. And I'm sure that was coming from people that were just watching you play, but you also heard it from your family. Did you ever think about quitting? Um, yeah, I mean, not to like quitting, quitting, but it was, it was pretty hard growing up just to hear like really close friends and family telling me that maybe I should focus on something else. Um, whether that be like academics or other extracurricular activities. Um, but I just know that, Growing up, I knew that like this was my journey and I was never the conventional Asian girl growing up. You can ask any one of my friends. Um, And so I love basketball and I love being on the court and it's just somewhere that I'm really comfortable and um, I wasn't going to give that up. How do you push through those negative comments though? Um, I just, I have really great mentors around me, like my mom and also um, one of my favorite coaches growing up, Jason Terry who just really told me um, that I could do it and just told me all the possibilities and the experience that experiences that I could um, have through basketball. Okay. There's that phrase, Natalie, that you need to see it so that you understand that it's possible. And I know for me personally, that actually rings true. I didn't even know being a sportscaster was even a thing when I was growing up because there weren't many that looked like me out there. You, You mentioned some of your mentors. There's Jason Terry. There's your mom. Your mom, obviously, you look like her too. So like, there's the, the genetic thing going, but she's still a parent and they, their role is to encourage you. Jason obviously had success in the NBA, but who are the people that look like you that allowed you to believe that you actually could do it? Yeah, um, well, definitely um, Jeremy Lin uh, when I was younger and just watching his um, success and his journey through the game and the NBA was just incredible and so inspiring for me to see someone that looked like me play at such a high level and succeed. Corey Close is your head coach. She's one of the great people I've uh, been fortunate enough to be around. You get to play for her. Mm -hmm. How has she supported you in talking about some of your personal experiences? uh, I can't say enough about Coach Corey. She was just an amazing person, like you you said. Um, But one of the things that 
um, her, sorry, okay. something that she really tells her players and I um, every single day is that the two most important things that we get out of our college experience is who we become and who we impact. And um, she's really helped me um, find my voice and help get my niche um, for who I want to impact. And she's just been with me um, along the way of every step. I talked to her this morning and mm -hmm. she talked about impact that mm -hmm. she encourages her players to um, to think about every single day. And it's not just basketball impact, it's it's community wide. What, what do you think your impact is right now? Uh, my impact, well, I would like to believe my impact is just to influence and encourage young Asian girls that look like me to do whatever they want. I don't want my message to be like one dimensional, just like basketball, but I feel like through my story, they can see like, if you really want to dream something, if you want to really want to do something that's kind of unconventional, you can do it. And um, my dream growing up as um, a young girl was to play basketball and I'm doing that right now. So, yeah. What's it like for you to be at Pauly and seeing young Asian girls courtside cheering and screaming your name on? I love it. Um, LA is such a diverse city, so it's just such a great opportunity. It's a blessing to be able to play in, um, in front of young girls. And so, like I said, my main goal was to influence them using my platform that I had. Um, but it's just incredible. I love it. It's, it's something that really fuels me. Um, and going back to Coach Corey and everything that she's done for me, um, they actually organized an Asian Heritage Night this past season when we played against Colorado. And um, shout out to Dana, who was our marketing uh, person for women's basketball. Um, but they really made that night really special for me because I've never really experienced anything like that. Um, they had Asian, they had an Asian um, national anthem singer. They had an Asian dance group for the halftime show, and it was just, um, it meant so much to me. And I, I was actually really nervous for that game because I just, I didn't want to let anyone down, but my teammates. And my coaches really uh, made that experience awesome for me. What was it like in the moment? Because what you're describing, let's be real here. I mean, I was in New York uh, at the time of Lynn Sanity, and I had family members that were not basketball fans at all keeping track of what he was doing in a Knicks uniform, and it became a thing. But outside of that, I don't, there's not another time in my lifetime where I could think of an Asian American playing basketball at a high level and capturing an audience that normally wouldn't be involved in something like that. For you though, to be sort of singled out at a UCLA game at home and the culture being celebrated, what was it like for you in that moment? Because I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I, it was, it's something I'll never forget. Um, I was, like I said, I was really nervous. I didn't want to like, Embarrassed, I don't know, I just wanted to put on a good show. Um, but after I just, it just felt so gratifying and just talking to and like interacting with those young little girls just made my day, made my season. It's yeah. one of my highlights, so yeah. Natalie, in, in our culture, sports, sort of seen as trivial. Let's, let's be real here. I mean, it's, you know, growing <laughs> up, it was be the doctor, be the lawyer, you know, the, the sciences and the maths and the whole thing. You've been able to turn your passion for basketball into this unbelievable path, right? It's a great education at UCLA. You're more than likely going to go on. You're going to make a living as a professional basketball player. Your journey, though, not even remotely mm -hmm. close to being done. What's the point, though, that you realized you needed to be the face for young Asian girls who actually want to play basketball? Yeah, um, so I started to realize that my story was a little different and unique. Um, like in high school, I uh, tried out and made for the U-17 USA basketball team. Um, and also like as a senior, I was at McDonald's and Jordan Band All-American. And at all those events, I never really saw anyone that looked like me um, in the past or in the present. Um, so I realized just um, my story and where I come from is just kind of different from everyone else. Is that the moment where you realize you were pretty good at basketball when you're able to, to make a team like that? Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 